Most expensive if you're on the road are to divide it in four categories, transportation, beds, food and activities. But most important is also keep in mind that all the costs from home, your fixed costs, will also continue while you're on the road. So make sure that you always have enough money in your bank account that it can be paid. Keep in mind while you travel that staying at home also costs money. And you have a different experience, of course. And keep in mind that if you are somewhere and you doubt if you spend money on it, yes or no, please say yes, because if you regret it afterwards and you have to go back to the destination, it is even more expensive. Activities on travels are very important because uh, activities are a big part of your travel experience. So make sure that you have enough budget to do activities. If you for yourself figured out which countries you want to travel, before you start traveling, you can already look online, of course, what in different countries you want to travel to or different cities, maybe a hostel bed will cost, uh, which transportation will cost if you go from A to B. So you can actually make a plan already and calculate how much money you're probably going to need. And online you can also already do research, maybe what scuba diving costs or if you want to do zip lining or a cooking class. The prices you can find most of the times already online, which make it easier to calculate how much money you think you will spend. And the best tip is if you calculate and made a budget at least at 10% more for like miscalculation, if something else comes up extra, or the hotel room you wanted is actually already uh, overbooked and you need to find a buy, uh, make a reservation for a more expensive bed. A nice way maybe on saving money on transportation is if you book a day trip and you don't go back to the start point. So I did it a few times that if it was very hard to get from A to B, or it was a very long way or something interesting was maybe halfway, which was uh, very difficult to come. I just booked a whole day trip and uh, then I just like halfway on three o'clock in the afternoon, I said, this is my end station. I don't go back to where we started and I already took all my luggage. And of course, it's not saving money on transportation, but if you take a night bus or a night train, you have your transportation and your bed in one price. That saves money on a bed. The price on what you spend on a bed can vary enormous. There's a big difference, of course, in countries and also in luxury, because the more the hotel or the hostel offers on facilities, the higher the price is. I like to mix and match. So I do dorms and I do private rooms. I have to say, because I'm a solo traveler, I actually like to have a bed in the city center or close to the city center that I can go there and walk by myself. Because if you need to have a taxi to take you in and out uh, to the city center all the time, that costs a lot of money too. And well, I prefer that I stay close to the center that I can actually walk to the restaurant or to the tourist attractions. Actually, I like to combine a bed and a breakfast. So most of the times, if you look for a dorm or a private room, you pay like maybe one, two or three dollars more and then you have breakfast included. I think that's very worth uh, spending a little bit more money on a room that it includes breakfast too. Because some most of the times it's just a small buffet so you can drink that extra juice or that extra cup of coffee. Food. Food is, of course, something you have a big influence on. There are many people who also say uh, they cook themselves along the road. I actually never did that in two years time because most of the times in the hostels, the kitchens are not all very good equipped. And you also have, I, as I feel, what do you do with the butter? What do you do with the salt and the pepper? Or what do you do with the leftovers? I already had so much luggage that I didn't want to bring uh, all the food that I have left over. 
Keep in mind that local food is much cheaper than international food. Keep in mind that lunch is much cheaper than dinner. So you can also have a nice warm meal up for lunch and only eat a salad maybe for dinner. I love street food. Uh, most of the times if you go to night markets, etc., the food is very good. It's very cheap and it's also a very nice way to meet local, local people. And I think the price will go one, two or three dollars. Most of the times you pay uh, the same price on your drink is as you pay on the food. I always mix and match everything. So expensive and non-expensive. So also on activities. If I have a very expensive activity day, uh, the day or two days after I try to spend no money or hardly any money on activities. So I go for a swim, go for a walk in the city, uh, read a book, plan everything. There is a lot of times that you also will not spend or hardly any spend any money on activities. One of my favorite activities on travel is the free walking tours. There are many free walking tours all around the world. I did them in Asia, I did them in Europe, I also did them in Colombia. They are a great way to get to know the city. The tour guides are very, very good and they give a lot of information. And the only thing you have to pay for it, it's a free walking tour, they expect to a tip when you are very satisfied with the uh, tour. Long-term travel means that you cannot plan everything. So I had to buy an airplane ticket to get from Honduras to Costa Rica because there was political stuff going on in Nicaragua. I actually planted, uh, was planning to go overland all the way from South Mexico all the way down to Panama. But because of this uh, political situation that changed, I had to fly over Nicaragua. And because of the political situation, everybody had to fly. So the prices on the airplane ticket almost doubled. I mix and match uh, cheap and expensive countries, stays, activities and food. So a lot of things you have influence on how much money you're going to spend on things, but also on a lot of things you don't have an influence on. And the adding of airplane tickets, visas, vaccinations and etc. It adds up. So for me, cheap countries were uh, Guatemala, Mexico, Vietnam, Laos. Other countries that are known for to be cheap is like th Thailand, India, uh, also in Europe, the Balkan, so the Eastern uh, countries like uh, Slovenia, Bulgaria, Romania. By own experience, for me, expensive countries were uh, Belize, America, Hong Kong, Switzerland and Costa Rica. Other countries that are known to be expensive, especially if you're from me, from Europe, is like New Zealand, Australia, but also Singapore, the Scandinavian countries, Iceland, Sweden, Norway. Thanks for watching. I want to share my travel experience, tips, tricks and lifestyle with you. So I would love if you would subscribe to my channel. Put on a smile. It's universal language.